Alright, it's recording. Alright. Alright. I will see you guys in the little while. Okay, sounds good. Alright. A little so, louder, so a little, little louder. louder. I want to be a little louder. <laughs> okay, sounds good. <laughs> sounds good, Ted. Uh, I'm glad to hear that. Alright. I'll shut this door, too. Thanks. So, what are you up to? Uh, just started a new, uh, a new company. Uh-huh. Called Tomfoolery Incorporated. Wow. And, uh... That's a good name. It is a good name. <laughs> we just bought the domain name for it, too. It was... Tomfoolery.com. Yeah. Nice. I was very excited to get that. That's awesome. I'm looking forward to that being my email address. That's you know? very cool. Yeah. So what is Tomfoolery Incorporated? About? You know, we're building, um, we're building mobile-first applications for the workplace. Um, what we realize is that there are a lot of uh, awesome enterprise businesses out there, but not a lot of really great, awesome mobile experiences for the workplace. And uh, we think that people should have consumer-grade experiences at work um, you know, typically enterprise software is kind of, you know, kind of crappy. Mm. And, uh, you know, people get stuck with these experiences that are suboptimal. Mm. And so what we wanted to do is say, you know, why don't we utilize our experience in the consumer realm to build something really beautiful for the workplace. And... There's a pretty big disruption, I would say, going on in the workplace right now with software in general because of, you know, devices like this. Yeah. You know, mobile devices. Uh, people really are able to bring their own software into the workplace now. Hmm. And because of that, uh, we're able to uh, really capitalize on that. Hmm. Um, start with consumers in the workplace and sort of sell up to the enterprise. Hmm. And so that's, uh, that's what we're doing. And, you know, it's a kind of a change for me because... And generally, I've done really consumer-focused software to this point, right? And so it's a it's a really new it's a new a new adventure for me. Sure, we'll see. So, what would it be an analog? Like, what would be an analog a consumer type software that? This well, uh, sure, absolutely. Um, so there's like a lot of fitness apps hmm. on on the phone, right? Tons of them, and they're awesome. There's like Game Fitness, and there's things like the Nike Fuel Band, and there's all these awesome apps about getting in shape, but none of them are made for the workplace. Huh. None of them. And a lot of people spend a lot of time organizing and coordinating walks at lunch, and you know, yoga, and the workplace is a prime place hmm. for fitness, and there's no no apps for that, right? So those are the sort of apps we would build. I see. Um, the closest thing to what we're building first is probably something that is a lot more like Yammer, um, which is a sort of Twitter for work, right. um, but we're doing it as more of a, a mobile application. Um, maybe a more beautiful mobile product experience than, than Yammer is giving people. So we recognize that work is a very social place, uh, that in a lot of ways you end up spending more time with your friends at work than you do with your own spouse. And yet sharing things on Facebook, for instance, uh, it's a little awkward at work, mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, work is its own world, it has its own culture. You know, people on Facebook may not understand that um, this funny picture of of Ethan and you know where at work everybody will understand that immediately huh. and so we think that there's a real opportunity to build uh, basically a, a social network at work um, based on teams that you work with so that's huh. kind of how we're we're starting it and then we hope to build other applications and allow other people to build other applications on top of it. I see. And will the, uh, the core product, the one you're talking about, that is sort of like a Facebook for work, is that going to be tomfoolery? Is that the brand? No, uh, it's going to be called something else. We don't, we don't know exactly yet, but uh -huh. it's going to be called something else. Tomfoolery is the name of the company, and right. so in a lot of ways, you know, we want to build um, a lifestyle brand for work. Hmm. We just think that that's an interesting, 
you know, why why does why do why does work software and why does work stuff always have to be boring? Boring and right. you know, it's it, I don't think it has to be. I yeah. think that you know, in this world where you know, we we have in our fingertips now the tools that we need to make work awesome. And so that's what we want to do, make work awesome. Hmm. Where did that idea come from? I mean, I like it uh, to hear it. It makes instant sense. Yeah. But no, I wonder where it came from. You know, the uh, so my co-founder is a, is a woman named Kakul Srivastava, who used to be actually the GM at Flickr. And she actually came to me with this idea a few months ago and said, I really think that there's just an endless amount of potential for this particular space. And I'm looking for somebody who likes to build mobile products and has an awesome team that likes to build mobile products. And I said, you know, this is, uh, this is the sort of thing that I've wanted to do for years, which is take the culture that we've been able to build at AOL, for instance, uh, in the mobile first group and bring it to, to an app. Because um, we actually had a very effective um, fun, irreverent team, and I want to bring that spirit to to a to a mobile app for mm -hmm. other people at work. Right, right. Because I think that culture building at work is it's as important as anything else you're going to do at work. People that are happy are way more effective. Um, they get way more done, uh, and they're. Just overall, they're just more successful. They're sure. also more loyal to the place they're working if they're happy. I mean, you know, it's funny. Uh, I think that the enterprise sees worker bees as robots, you know, or as worker bees, right? Mm -hmm. And people are not robots. People are people. And people have emotions and they have, you know, um, they have emotions. They're right. emotional, right? And right, so, right, right. If they're emotionally on the happy side, they're going to stick around, they're going to do better work. There's some statistic that uh, people who have a best friend at work, or like a really close friend at work, um, are 60% more efficient. Something sure. ridiculous like that than people that don't. And if you think about it logically, like, wow, that totally makes sense. I sure. buy that 100%. But you would be surprised at how... Um, you know, HR and IT and these sort of uh, these groups and corporations don't really they 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 know it, but they they don't live it. And mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. we're gonna allow the worker to bring that to work. Right. Bring their their whole self. Show up at their whole self. Yeah. So. You got to live that a couple of years ago when you went to AOL because you'd been doing your own thing for a long time. Right. And suddenly you get to bring a team and create, I guess part of the idea was that you were going to create kind of the rally up vibe That's right. um, for an enterprise uh, situation. I remember uh, I was really worried because our team was so on the other end of irreverent that it was could be really bad when we got there. And uh, <laughs> so I, I, I made a list. I remember we... We worked together and I created this list of words that I did not want them to say, ever. Because they're, you have to understand, they're people like uh, Ruby and Naya and Davey Reynolds and Stacy Nagel, like these are people who, uh, they're, they're their own urban dictionary as far as uh, the things they talk about and do are just, you know, just disgusting people. And, uh, and uh, <laughs> disgusting, wonderful, amazing, effective the best team ever. But anyways, they so there was just a list of words that, that I did not, you know, want them to say at work. And uh, we got there, and because I had never worked for a big company before, so I was like, oh man, are we going to last like three months before somebody's going to get fired? I just know it. And we got there, and the guy who was the president of the West Coast at the time was a guy named Brad Garlinghouse, who's now the CEO at You Send It. And... He said to the whole team, he said, if I don't get an HR call about one of you, at least once a month, you're not doing your job. <laughs> and uh, I was like, all right. 
I wish you hadn't said that to everybody here, but okay, you know, and, and we really try to bring a culture of innovation and fun. Mm -hmm. uh, work hard, play hard to the AOL West Coast office. And we were pretty efficient, or effective, sorry, for mm -hmm. a, a long time at that. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, anyways, it's, we want to bring that to the world with this app. That's what we want to do. So um, you said earlier that most enterprise uh, software, I forget the word you used. You didn't say sucked, but, oh, you said it was sub-optimal, or delivered a sub-optimal experience. It sucks. Uh, it sucks. usually sucks. And it's not that, you know, the, the people that make enterprise software are trying to solve a problem, and they have a specific customer. And that's somebody who's usually in an IT department, right? Mm -hmm. Or somebody who's running HR, let's say, okay? Mm -hmm. And that customer has different needs than the person that's going to use the software. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it ends up being experiences that are feature-heavy, um, often deal a lot with security and, you know, are, are, are made for machines that we don't love to use necessarily. Right. Uh, we want to build our software for people, for consumers at work. Yeah. You know? And w will you be marketing to them? Or yeah. Will you be mar so you won't be marketing to the companies, you'll be marketing to the work. You know, I think eventually if we ever want to get paid for what we do, we have to sell up to the enterprise, right? Right. Um, but I know that if we can be efficient at creating software that people want in the workplace, we'll find our pathway to monetization. Right. Um, whether it's administrative controls or allowing HR to push a, a poll into mm -hmm. a team or, or into a company. Um, if people are using our software we, at work, we will create plenty of opportunity for monetization. Right. And, uh, but, you know, it's a new world, right? Like, people are literally bringing, you, know, you go into a meeting now. When I started at AOL, if I went into a meeting, everybody had laptops. Now, if I go to a meeting, or right before I left, if I go to a meeting, everybody has, is like this during the meeting, or they have their iPad out during the meeting. Sometimes they have, like, a computer out. But mobile devices are where work's happening. Yeah, and so that's that's a huge disruption. And sure. when any disruption happens in a marketplace, there's huge opportunities. Sure. And so the decision maker for work, I mean, look at Evernote or look at uh, Dropbox, right? Mm -hmm. People are bringing those products into the workplace, and they're expensing them. They're just saying, I don't, I don't care. I'll, I'll expense it. I'll, you know, this makes my work life better. And I'm going to make my own work life better because there are tools that I can use now to do that. Mm -hmm. I remember the first time I created an entire presentation. I was somewhere I couldn't use my computer and I really needed to create a presentation. So I used Keynote on my iPhone and made an entire presentation that I then was able to utilize the very next morning in a meeting. And projected to an Apple TV from my phone. That's pretty cool. It's cool. It's a new world, right? Sure. And, and that is the sort of disruption that it's the reason, you know, Windows 8 looks the way it does. It's the reason, uh, you know, you're seeing people making these products like Dropbox. It's a multi-billion dollar company now. Sure. So can you give an example? I don't want you to uh, pick on anybody, but can you give an example of an of a something that you might replace, that you might be able to come up with a better version, something that's in wide use in the enterprise uh, uh, situation that you know you can do better? Well, sure. I mean, if you look at Active Directory, right, which, like, uh, there are a lot of different Active Directory-type products out there, um, but... So you, I'm not familiar with that. So basically, in a big company, there's somewhere there is an address book for everybody. But it's not generally just an address book. It's also... Uh, has their IM, their phone number. I mean, it, Active Directory is sort of updated um, live, so you're not sort of pulling down a phone book, right? Uh, it might have what projects they're working on. Okay, sure. Okay, so, you know, if I'm, like, working on 
AOL example, if I'm working on movie phone and I need to contact one of the New York people um, who also works on movie phone, AOL had something called Atlas, which was basically an active directory that allowed me to search and find that person and contact them in several different ways. Mm -hmm. um, those, are, those products are generally pretty bad. I see. Um, and so if you can imagine, a pro there's, there's a better ways to do a product like that and there's a way to get really to the pulse of what somebody's working on, mm -hmm. what they're experiencing, what their frustrations are, I can find out so much about somebody. I mean, what if, what if, uh, what if an Active Directory was more like a Facebook timeline, where I could see where they started, the, you know, in the company and who do they work with and who do they know and, and big mm -hmm. companies like AOL's got five thousand people, <coughs> right? Right. Well, if somebody calls from out of the blue and is like, "Yeah, this is Saul and Palo Alto, and will you help me on this thing?" It's just like anything else. They're like, well, who are you? Right. But if I could say, yeah, I know Brian Murphy and, you know, we're friends and he told me maybe you'd be the right person to talk to, but that changes the dynamic. Of course. And as you know, work's all about getting things done, right? Sure. So Active Directory is really important. Active Directory should tell me a lot more about you right. than what your phone number is. Yeah, I can see it. I can picture it. Right, and I, you used the word teams earlier, and that seems really smart. So you've got a uh, what an organizing, what would you call that? So that's organizing the, that's the organizing principle of our first piece of software. Right. Would be making your teams more fun and sure. surprisingly useful. Right, yeah. surprisingly efficient. If I can say, I mean, imagine just Facebook for a second. If I can say on Facebook, hey, this is what I'm working on today, and just my friends at work can see that. That would be useful. It would be great for people to know what I was working on right then and there. Sure. Or if I had a question, like, people start at companies all the time, right? And they're like, where do I find the, you know, the copy machine? And what's the code for this? And what's the code for that? If I could just put that into a feed, capture that content, right. and, you know, reutilize that content, like... There's just so much we can do. Sure, it's like a mini crowdsourcing the company. Absolutely, or or just like, I can't tell you how many times I'm trying to find somebody, literally like physically find somebody. I wish I could just know, are they in a meeting? Are they in the building? Are they, where are they, you know? Right. I mean, that would be extremely useful to me. Yeah. Things like that. Things that we do on our phone all the time. We check in on Foursquare. We check in on Facebook. We, sure. You know, we say where we're at. We take pictures. It's geolocated. It's, you know. But basically vertical, or put the whole thing in the vertical that is like, this is our company. This is our... Yeah. 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 You know? And people have tried this, by the way. But they didn't try... And like Yammer is a great example of a company that tried it. Yammer was sold to Microsoft for $1.2 billion. Okay? They had a great exit. But they had more of a broadcast model, and later on they added groups and some of that, but they didn't grow up in, in, in the mobile age, right? They mm -hmm. just were a little bit, they were all web-based, right? I think they were founded in maybe 2007, 2008, right when these devices started to really change the world. And you either have DNA of a mobile company or you don't, right? right. Look at what Facebook's trying to do right now. They're trying to create the DNA of a mobile company, and they are actually doing very well at it in my opinion. Okay. Um, but, <clears throat> but a company like Yammer is a great company, great people, but they're really a web-based DNA. Right. We're going to have a mobile DNA. I and know. And that mobile DNA changes your whole perspective on exactly what you're doing. So, yeah. So, I, I think I get what you're going to do. But, so how, do, I'm just curious, how do you do this? You've done this a bunch of times. Like, do you, do you have the product in mind already, or do you start with, uh, you know, see with, put the team together? Do you whiteboard stuff? Um, well, I think you know every every time you do this, it's different, and there's no there's no shortcuts ever. Like that's one thing I've learned is that um, there's never any shortcuts. It's always a challenge. You never you get better at some things, but when you're building something new, you just can't know what it is until you're done with. it. Hmm. And uh, so you pick a space, right? And and the, th the reason why I think what, what Cockle, when she came to me with this idea, the reason why I liked it is she said, 
great people. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, we what? Say the name of your partner again. Cockle. It's K A K U L. Okay. Srivastava. And that's S R I V A S T A V A. Just like it sounds. Just like it sounds. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah. So and what is her background again? Uh, I don't mean to interrupt. No, 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 it's okay. She uh, I mean her background she went to MIT and you know, was into like biomed and mm. sciences and went to uh, business school at at Berkeley at Haas and then was like I love this consumer internet thing and ended up at Yahoo for like eight years and uh, how do you how do you know each other through a mutual friend okay and she uh, she was the GM at Flickr and then she took over sort of product for all of Yahoo's community apps I guess it was called um, which is like Messenger and Mail and all of those things. And then she went to, on to do some a lot of consulting, basically, for mm -hmm. a while. And then she popped out and wanted to do this. Right. So are you, where are you going to be do, doing this? Are you going to be... We're split between... We're, we're really based in San Francisco. Okay. But there's a few of us who are here. So <coughs> that we will have a Santa Cruz presence, no matter what. Great. For a long, forever, as long as I live here, <laughs> which is I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, you like it here. So, what was happening on Westcliff last week? So we had a uh, basically we had a. There was a couple people from San Francisco who were going to come down here. Um, what? You're, oh, I got to be louder. Oh shoot! <laughs> a couple people from San Francisco who were going to be down here, um, and uh, rather than we wanted to get a lot done, and I've been. At AOL, I did this thing, and I did this thing with Rally Up too, which was the whole get in the RV and go to camp thing. Right. And so I really believe in uh, bringing teams together with where everybody basically stays together somewhere and drinks a lot of beer and coats and builds products. And so we had a couple of people coming down from San Francisco, and rather than staying in, in a hotel for those two people, we rented a house uh, on Westcliff, and it ended up being very affordable. You know, it was like the same as renting a hotel room for two sure. people for whatever nights. And uh, I, I ended up just cooking a lot. <laughs> That's what I did while everybody else designed and coded. I just made them lots of meat. They ate a lot of meat. Meat eaters. And, uh, and uh, we spent three days and nights coding and working on our product. It was fun. That sounds like fun. Yeah. And how many people were there? Um, there were really about four or five people. There's sure. a couple who came in and out. So. Right. Yeah, it was great. So, um, did you bring how, the team that, or this team? Is this the same team that you brought to AOL? Nope. Or, so okay. No, it's just uh, my one of the co-founders of Rally Up was mm -hmm. a guy named Ethan Nagel. Sure. So he left AOL at the same time as me, um, and. Uh, we hired somebody who recently left AOL named Mike Baldwin. But other than that, oh, and then Davey, sorry. Davey also had left AOL, and we, uh, we brought him on as well. Um, so Davey's, What's Davey's last name? Um, Reynolds. Oh, oh, sure, of course. You mentioned earlier. And uh, so, yeah, so we, uh, yeah, and we're a team of five. There's another guy named Simon Bazzioni who's... Uh, used to run the platform piece of Flickr. He's sort of the back-end guy. And then there's Cockle, who's the CEO. Okay. And uh, so, yeah, and then as far as the rest of the team at AOL, you know, I th a lot of them are very happy at AOL, so I don't want to, you know, if they're ever interested in working with me, I'm sure they'll contact me. Right. So um, they're happy at AOL. Were you not happy there, or did you...? No, you know what? I, I mean, look... At some point, right, there's, I was very happy. The first year there was awesome. Mm -hmm. I loved it. The second year was a little tougher. And, you know, a lot of big company politics, and it's all the stuff you would expect, right? But in a way, um, I don't know, I wanted to be doing a startup. 
Yeah. That's where I'm happiest, I think. Sure. And I enjoyed my time at AOL, and I like the whole big company thing is, it's fine. Yeah. But it, it was time for me to move on. I could have stayed one more year at AOL. I was technically supposed to stay one more year at AOL. Um, but I thought, you know, life's too short. You got to do what makes you happy. You can't just grin and bear it for a year. You know, you, you don't want to do that. You want to do, you always want to be doing the thing that's going to ultimately bring you happiness. And uh, I knew that it was time. And, and I met Cockle and I thought, you know what? I've been waiting a long time for someone awesome like Cockle Srivastava to ask me to do a startup. I should do that. And so I did it. Yeah. And it, it, uh, literally I decided that at the lunch I met her. Wow. That was it. I told her at the lunch. I said, if you want me, I'm in. Wow. I was like, that sounds awesome. And, uh, you know, I had been considering it. It wasn't like I was super happy to do well. And then I was like, you know, I've been thinking about it, looking for something interesting. And based on, you know, what I felt about her and our mutual friend that interviewed I was just like, that's it. I know this is the right thing. That was it. Cool. And I never looked back. That's a good feeling. Yeah. And when was that? Like October. September, okay. October. Sure. Yeah. So this happened pretty quickly. Yep. Now, were you commuting when you were in AOL? Yeah. You were? Driving to Palo Alto at least four days a week. Okay. You're not going to miss that part, I'm guessing. No, that, that sucks. But now I have to go to San Francisco. Yeah. So, uh... That's, I spend a lot of time in the car. Sure. Um, I would love to have a, a business that's based out of here, but it's not really realistic for me, uh, I've realized over the years. Okay. That it's just, it's hard. I know Lloyd's trying, Lloyd Tab, who you interviewed last time, he's trying to do the same kind of thing, which is have a company that's kind of split between here and San Francisco. Yeah. And uh, I think it's kind of cool. It's a cool opportunity. It's like really interesting to, you know, to, get some of the Santa Cruz vibe into the products that we're building. But the realization is that there's a lot more talent available on the other side of the of that hill. And that's a, when you're trying to do a startup, that's a really important thing. Hmm. So what's your next step? Or what are you guys doing now? I mean, you're, you're actually building... Yeah, we're building our first product. Okay. And it will probably... In February, we'll probably do a limited alpha of it, uh -huh. um, followed by a beta in like March, April time frame. And you know, we're 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 gonna do something I never had the opportunity to do, which was really like step out the develop, like get real feedback on it, make changes to it, put it out again. The agile make, thing, yeah. Um, well, we're, I would, I guess it's the Agile thing. I have my own sort of way of looking at it, which is that, you know, I call it more rapid iteration than Agile. I mean, Agile has its own, that's another terrible, uh, enterprise-y sort of thing, in my opinion, sometimes. Is that so? Well, I, like, Agile development, there's, there's actually a company that called Rally Software, who actually tried to sue us when we called our thing Rally. Thanks, guys. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so that's why we ended up calling it Rally Up, was because they wanted, they were not happy with it. But that's like, that's crappy task management type software mm. um, that we're not about. We like things like Asana. Have you ever seen Asana? No. No, that's real, like, that's real agile task management, in my opinion. Huh. It's beautifully done. It's all web based. It's uh, you know, I mean, uh, Agile's like, Agile's fine, it, it, and certain people depend on it. And when you have like a large company and everybody's moving around, and it's there can be uses for that. But what I like to do is get everybody in a room, build a lot, then look at it and play with it and go, oh no, that's not the right thing. Let's build it again and again and again and again. <laughs> and we're on this one app that we're building. Or we're on our fourth iteration of it already hmm. and that's after two months and so you're just going with your gut on it rather than put it through some sort of a specified process that somebody just, else has set up right exactly like yeah. 
forget the process. It's all, it either works for you or it doesn't. And when you're looking at it, when you're holding it, and you're interacting with it, you know whether or not it works or not. So you got to get to the there as fast as possible. Because mm. you may invest months in creating a, a product requirements document and getting all the design right and every, you know, and you are losing time because when you're at the end of that thing, it might not work. And if it doesn't work, you're screwed because you just wasted three, four months of development, right? Mm -hmm. And now you have to change the whole thing. I'd rather spend two, to, two weeks to four weeks developing an initial product that's broken, doesn't look right, and go, oh, okay, now I see what we have to do. And we do it again, and we do it again, and again, and again. That's what I like to do. Fun. So, do you have a guesstimate about which iteration, what, like, if you've already been through four, and you're going to release Alpha sometime in February. We got it now. You've we, got it now. Yeah, we got it now. You got it. We know what to do now. Yeah. Can you demo it? Mm -mm. No. I would demo it for you, but yeah. I wouldn't demo No, I meant it. for me. Yeah, I mean, not for your article. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I, I mean, can't describe what it's doing. Of course not. No. Because it's going to be still a month out. Yeah, it's at least a month. It's yeah. probably February. Yeah. Sure. But I'll show it to you, obviously. Okay. If you'd when like the camera's it. off, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. Yeah, that's, yeah. Cool. I mean, it's, it's a cool product. Uh, you know, it needs a lot of work still, but uh, we're getting there. Nice. So... I, I want to come back to tomfoolery. Yeah. But, like, where does that originate? Where did you... Is that well, actually, you know, funny enough, it originated from Cockle because they, in job descriptions of Flickr, uh, they would end every job description with, uh, you know, likes a little tomfoolery in the office or something like that, you know. They wanted a certain type of person, okay, at Flickr, who was culturally in line with the spirit of the team, which, you know, they didn't just want... They wanted people who like to have fun at work. Hmm. And, uh, and you know, I think that's a perfect work brand, tomfoolery. Sure. Because what it, what it says is, we're about fun, we're about work. Our products will say that. But we're about fun at work. We're about the thing that nobody talks about at work, which is that... Work should be fun. Work should be social. Work should make you feel good about yourself. Work should do all of those things. Right. Shouldn't just pay the bills. If it's just paying the bills and you're not happy, then you should do your what you can to change that situation. Sure. Um, not everybody is fortunate, and some people get stuck in, in jobs that they're not happy about. But then you should try to bring happiness into your job. Um, and I think that's why Tom Foolery Incorporated was the perfect brand for what we want to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, a little bit of mischief goes a long way at work. Right, right. And so I think we want to bring that into, uh, we want to bring that to people. Is that, that's a good tagline. Is that, or did you just, a little just, bit of mischief? I like it. <laughs> um, now that's something, you know, you've, I've heard your story well, you told your story over at uh, uh, Cruzio back in July, I guess it was. Um, it, it seems like that's something that you've brought to your work environments for, for, for a long time. Did that, did that go all the way back to the beginning, or was there a time when you realized? You know what? I'm a camp director. And, you know, if I was going to describe anything, like, I literally was a camp director. That's how I started in the world. Um was being a camp director. And I think that great camp directors inspire the same kinds of fun and, you know, uh, and tomfoolery as any great leader. It's about getting get things done. done. And you know, there's a lot of parallels between camp and startups. I've always wanted to, like, write a book about how startups are just like camp, you know? You're, you have a bunch of people that come together really fast. It's high emotion, high energy. You have to make a lot with a little. And, you know, being a camp director, you realize, like, hey, if your staff isn't happy, your kids aren't happy, right? If your counselors aren't happy, 
and they feel like they're being dumped on by their leaders, then the kids, there's way more problems. But if your staff is really happy, you're inspiring them, you're being a principal-centered leader, somebody who leads by example, yourself, then you'll find that your staff will rise to the occasion. Um, and there's a million stories where, you know, staff people are, are doing a great job, but they're, you know, they're not happy. And if you can, if you can make that connection between happiness and, and what they do with their kids. I mean, it just, it makes all, all the kids are so much happier, right? right. And, sure. and, it, and it's like, it's like being a parent or anything else, you know, when you want to spend time with your, with your kids and you're happy and you're having fun, you're just like a thousand times better parent. Right. Um, and so, I, it goes straight back to the workplace, straight back to AOL. If People who were working on the products at AOL, the mobile products we were working on in the two, last two years are happy. Their productivity is way up. They love what they're doing. They can't wait to get to work and do it. And I'm gonna, uh, my goal is for our team to bring that energy to the workplace through this app. Yeah. I and, and a bunch of other apps. So, you say, you say I, was, I, I think it was funny you said, I am a camp director. You didn't say I was a camp director. Um, but you were. I mean, when? How did that? Can you briefly tell me that story? Sure. Uh, I, you know, I did camps growing up, and you know, I worked my way up from a counselor to a program director to a you know administrative staff member for years and years. And uh, so this is what you did, like in the summers while you were in college. Or? Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then, you know, camp camps in the Bay Area and or in California and the West Coast are generally year-round operations, right? Like, the camp that I was a director at is in the Santa Monica Mountains in Malibu. And it's a beautiful, amazing camp, and, you know, they run programs year-round, basically. Okay. Um, and uh, so, I actually, for a period, I would go to camp and work full-time at camp, and then I would go do a startup, and then I would go back to camp, and I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do. Um, I still don't know. And I still consider myself a camp director, you know. I'm sure that one day I will be a camp director again. It's just, it's just in my blood. I just love it, you know. <laughs> I love the, the randomness. I love the fact that, you know, every day people are singing. I mean, people are happy. People are goofing off. Like... You know, play is a very important part of life, and I think we've lost the playfulness of, uh, of, of our everyday life, which is why sometimes children, you know, sort of bring us out of it. Like, all of a sudden, with my kid, I'll be doing something absolutely ridiculous, and I'll be like, I'm having fun, you know? Yeah. We need more of that in our life. And anyways, so I think, I think I'm, a, I'm a camp director at heart. Still, I like it. I like you know? it. And I think that that's what... That's where I learned everything about leading teams. Everything I learned at camp. That is very cool. Yeah. I mean, if you're, did you go to camp growing up? I did. I, I went to camp. I worked at a camp for oh, a yeah? while. Yeah. Which one? Oh, this was back east. Yeah. Uh, camp Orenda was the camp I went to when I was a little kid. Right. And I, it's true, I loved it. And then I worked at a camp in a kitchen uh, for two months. And you loved that? I loved it. Yeah. I mean, it was the hardest. It was crazy because we were working 12 hours a day. Right. You know, Washing dishes for six hundred kids, right? Um, uh, and I loved it. Yeah, and you still you meet people who are camp people. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like you probably do you still have friends from from camp. You know I don't, and but I'm thinking about it right now, and it makes yeah. me a little sad. It's like yeah. I'm, I'm remembering them in that time, and uh, yeah, it's I really think I'll reach out. To, I can think of one of them right now that I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna reach out to. No, it's just cool. Like yeah. camp people have <clears throat> people who are friends at camp have like I think special. Special bond, you know. Did you do camp, Ted? I did. What we camp? Went. It's a church-owned camp. Yeah, every every summer, like four or five summers in a row. You loved it. it. Was, loved it. Loved it. My brother worked at it. Yeah, it was great. Cool. Yeah. I so like anyways. the analogy, actually. Yeah. No, it's running a camp. <laughs> yeah, I like Still it. Still running camps. So, is there one more like fun app that you're gonna be working on now that you wouldn't mind sharing? Um. Like the fun piece, just so I can help readers see where the how the fun piece fits in here. 
like so it's a I get that so this has been fun and I could keep going but I think this is probably a good time to okay, cool. to knock off this round but um, what's probably going to happen is I'm going to I've already got a bunch of ideas of how I'm going to put this together okay but once I get started I'm going to I'm gonna see. Oh wait a minute! Um, there's a hole here or something. So yeah, if it's right with you, I'll get back to you and yeah. And then um, before, let's try to coordinate. And make sure that I I didn't. You. This is actually the very first interview I've done for this new thing. Okay. Um, and we're gonna be very specific about. Uh, we're gonna be very specific about like how we roll out the press on this thing. I understand. So we want to. I just want to make sure that we're not. So let's just coordinate a little bit before we. That's uh, fine. I'll that's cool. I'll go through and give you like you know some highlight. I'll tell you. Yeah. Oh, I got this part. This part is this right? Is that right? Yep. And uh, definitely when it, when it comes to numbers, I'll check in with you and see what's changed or what how much of that you want to share. Yeah. That'd be great. All right. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, man. It's always fun to talk about myself. <laughs> <laughs> Um, um, Dave, so I got a question for you. Yeah. Do you? I can totally like I know we did this shoot already, but um, you know I don't know what you're thinking with the thread and the theme. It's always nice to do a photo shoot after you have the article. You know what I mean? Yeah. To create the visuals after you have the, the content. Um, do you have like like an old camp director's outfit that's kind of kitschy? Yeah, you know, that, like, like something like uh, what was that movie? It was out recently. Um, Bill Murray was in it. Um, Norton, I think, about this camp. This little kid, and this girl. Oh, and they hooked sure, up sure, on this sure. island. Yeah. Oh, that was so good. That's the Moonrise. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. like, like you know, the camp director Ed, Ed Norton, right? Remember? Yeah. The Boy Scoutish. You yeah. Know what I mean? totally. Do you do you have an outfit like that, dude? I mean, like or. It could be rat one or something like no, that. I, you know, that's a very. No, I've got, I got what you want. You do? Yeah, I have like a. I might I, want to do another <laughs> shoot. <laughs> did you see the photo? That I, I did, and I loved it. I love it too. too. Yeah, I know, I, but I'm just hearing so the you story. Got? You know. Well, I just have like a, you know, I have like one of those old vests with like a thousand pockets on it. You yeah. Know what I mean, like, yeah. Yeah. Whistle? If there, if like, yeah, there'd be like a whistle. If there was like a funny little hat, you know, like. Oh, I've got plenty of those. And like. <laughs> You know, like in, in in a scene, like even if you're outside, like you're a trail master kind of a thing, you know, I don't know. There there could be something fun there. Compass, you know. I love the like you hand already it. did. I well, that, the we oh, dude, did. and I've got a bunch more, dude. That are that are that are rad. Yeah, dude. Wait till you see them. It's just, I don't know what you're thinking for the article, and if it has this. <clears throat> Oh, camp, of course, it's camp director it's theme uh, running through it. You know. Yeah. Maybe. Dude, I want to. I want to work with you on your book. I love this idea. Yeah. <laughs> I got a ghost. I got a buddy that's looking for a gig too. Oh yeah. To go to yeah. You got plenty of things going on. Yeah, I think my book would be about one chapter long. <laughs> but yeah, this part is about the the camp director. It, it makes all the sense in the world because it just seems like, in a way, what happened is you know you took your whole self that you've been you know besides developing a bunch of products, you sort of built a, a, you know a, a skill set that you were bringing to all your different things. And then you took it over the hill and went to work for one of the biggest companies in the space uh, where you figured out a way to help them do what they're doing a lot better using your stuff, right? Yeah, I mean, way. you know, I used to take uh, 40, so I think we did it five times while I was at AWOL. We took like 40 engineers up to camp, to that camp in Malibu um, and had these like crazy sessions for a week where we would just drink and code, you know? And it was epic. I mean, fucking epic, you know? <laughs> We'd take a day and do the, like, the ropes course and some shit like that, but generally people were up two, three in the morning just coding and designing and, you know, and it was, uh, it was amazing, right? And then people on different, from different parts of the country too, you'd get people from you know, New York and Dulles, Virginia, joining people from Palo Alto and San Francisco. And, uh, it would create bonds, just like you have, you know, with people who you went to camp with that were significant. Plus, you get about six weeks of work done in one week. It's like unbelievable how much, once you get everybody in a room and they can't leave. It's like what we did for Instinct. Right, exactly. The tech racing is right. very much like tech racing. Yeah. Right. You know, 
Sure. Yep. It's the same sort of intense emotional and I think like my next gig is going to just be bringing companies to camp. You know, like I'll just be a camp director for, you know, companies that need to get shit done. That's what I'd like to do. I think I should have just done that. Why didn't I just do that? <laughs> it's a cool idea. <laughs> um, maybe, maybe you do that next. Our studio can yeah. use camp for a couple projects we have. Yeah, dude. We'll just start doing fucking camp. <laughs> I just need to get better internet up there. But anyways, <laughs> you know, it's like so horrible up there. Um, Which, what's the name of the camp? Camp uh, Shalom. It's the Shalom Institute. It's a Jewish camp. Sure, cool. And uh, it's great, you know, you have a chef. You just, you know, you don't worry about meals. You walk to the dining hall for meals and it's all just taken care of. And everybody, all they have to do is focus on having fun and coding. Wow. And bonding and hanging out. And it's great. And there's just little rooms for everybody to stay in and, you know, it's fun. So the people that you've been working with or known at Camp Shalom for, it sounds like, most of your life. Yep. They must, what do they think about the fact that suddenly you're showing up with a bunch of, like... They love it. Yeah, I bet. Uh, they love it. I mean, so first of all, it, you know, it pays very well. I mean, it's so cheap for it. If AOL wants to get a bunch of people together, they've been paying for a hotel room for every single person, meals for every single person. This ends up being like $150 per person. No, is it even that much? per person per day for room and food and everything, you know. And so it's like it's like nothing. Right. You know, for these companies that are an average of two fifty a day. These retreat centers are just unbelievably expensive, you know. You know, rough it a little more up at camp, but But sure. It's part and of it. And I bet you Camp Shalom, that's a, they're getting a nice big paycheck. They exactly. can it easy. Yeah, no, they love it. <laughs> no, it's great money for them. And it Ups their exposure a little bit too, so it's good. No, it's it's fun. Have you got pictures of yourself at Camp Shalom? Oh sure. Maybe you could. Maybe we should look at those too to put in the inside mm -hmm. to tell the story. Even if you've got pictures of yourself as a kid. Yeah, well, I was gonna say when you were younger for sure. That'd be fun. I've got the green. You, I need to, you just need to, like I need to come to your house or something, and maybe. I'm not trying to. Yeah, sure. <laughs> like, I would look at rummage through your shit, you know what I mean? Like, your box of badges and what box that you might have. I don't have anything like that. You know, do you have, like, do you have a canoe paddle? You know, like, I'm thinking of all that camp I've got stuff, a canoe paddle. You know, like... My house is a little campy. We could do it up there. Where do you live? In Scotts Valley. Oh, nice. Take a look at it. All right. Yeah, sweet. Cool. Cool, guys. Thanks. That was fun. Oh, it was. So thanks, man. No problem. We'll talk again soon. Yeah. Thanks,